Who doesn't love a good villain in cinema? In today's episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast, we're going to do a very special episode, a movie villain draft. What's up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. And today, we're doing a movie draft. It's a very special one. We're going to draft a villain draft. So we're going to take a roster of 15 people each on our teams, James and I. Are you going to keep track? I'll keep track. Okay. I'll try to. <laughs> you did it last time. You did a really terrific oh, job. No, thank you. So we're going to draft movie villains. Now, all movie villains are up for grabs. No TV villains. And we're going to do 15 picks each. So 15 rounds of a draft. And we'll also select who goes first with the coin. And now, there are so many great villains. And oftentimes, a film is only as good as its villain is. I already have some favorites, and I'm sure audiences, if they're in, the, if they would be in a draft, they they would have favorites too. I as well have several favorites, and movie drafts are super fun. We try to do one like every month. They're super light and engaging. Yeah, and we just love talking about this kind of cinema. We love talking about villains. We love horror villains. We love action villains. They're all on this list: sci-fi, fantasy villains. I'm sure you'll hear some some surprises. I have some sleepers up my sleeve. You had some sleepers in the A24 draft and it didn't help you. Didn't help at all. <laughs> um, but I think I have some legit sleepers for this one. I'm, I think I'm going to surprise some people with my picks. I was sleeping on them, huh? All right. Well, first of all, let's start off with our team names, Anthony. Do you have a team name for your movie villain team? Anthony Sugar. Anthony Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I just came over that. That's great. That's pretty damn good. It seems like Anthony has a favorite up his sleeve with that. My, That's not a sleeper. <laughs> my team name will be Wayland Utani. Ooh. Wayland Utani. Wayland Utani. I hope I spelled that right. Don't forget to put you... that dash in there. Oh, it's in there now. Wayland dash Utani. God, I got it. I got it. That's the company in the oh, Alien we, franchise. Yeah, we know. We know. No, I'm, I'm, in case some people don't know. Every time the... we talk about Alien, you talk about Wayland Utani for 16 minutes. I mean, it's an integral part of the entire franchise. I don't know why I wouldn't. Moving on. Moving on. Let's do a uh, flip. A coin. Okay. To see who goes first. Let me check to make sure that's not double sided. I don't want any tricks here. It's Anthony. the Jurassic Park coin we always use. Okay. I just want to. I just want to see with my own eyeballs that there wasn't any. You're just skeptical because you never win a draft. <laughs> I'm still yet to win a draft, everybody. <laughs> Anthony had to remind us. God damn it. You might win this time, man. Might. All Will. right. So Will. We, have, we have two options for a coin flip. Would you like to call it, or would you like me to call it? Well, you won the last one, so you might as well pick what you want to do. Okay. So then you flip it. Okay. I'm gonna toss it to you. Ooh, caught it. No, you did with not. With my chest. Right. With my chest. <laughs> you missed it and it landed on your chest. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it went through my hands. Um, what do you want? You want DNA? You want DNA. dino DNA? DNA. All right. Dino DNA means if you win, you get the first pick. Yes. Here we go. Oh. Terrible flip. Oh, I Just do a new flip. That was, that was bad. <laughs> oh, all right. It fell on the ground. Keep an eye on the... Just do it again. You gotta, you gotta just drop it on your head. It's a weird, it's so, a weird coin. It's oddly so flip heavy. it and watch it. You just look away when you flip it. There you go. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Fucking Dino DNA. All wins. right, first pick of the draft. First pick. God for damn it. Anthony Sugar has the first pick of the draft. Oh man, so many great options. Don't fumble the bag here, man. So many great villains. There's only one that comes to mind for me for the first pick of this draft, and it's something that if I wasn't able to get it, I would have been really upset. And I'm going to go with the Joker in The Dark Knight. God damn it! The Joker. Great pick. Heath Ledger's obviously... Well, like, I think the Joker, it's just all Joker versions, you know I'm I mean? going... I think... I think we could do different versions if we want. No, I think it's, it's just... There's just too much going on there. Let's just okay. pick... It's the Joker. This is the Joker. All right. But my, I'm specifically yeah. saying I'm going... Like, if I'm going to pick the Jokers, it's the Heath Ledger Joker. Best Joker That's ever. That's my pick. Oh, fuck yeah. Good pick for your first round. Oh, that man. was not going to be my first pick, though. Oh, no. Well, now you can do your first pick. I, actually, I'm pretty stoked about this. I don't this. know why you got upset then if it wasn't even your first pick. Well, because I was worried that... Well, I mean, I was hoping to get Joker a second round. Joker ain't going second round. I know, but he could. Even in a draft of two teams. He could. Not... He could go second round. You never know. With two people. <laughs> get out of here. Okay, let's get to my first pick. Well, I don't know how I got these scars. My first pick of the draft is going to be Darth Vader, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker. Let's go. Well done, well done. I think it's a very strong first pick. Obviously, one of the... I think a favorite in the world of villains right now, especially because the revisiting of Anakin with the TV series on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. And sure. the canon is rich with this character. It's rich canon. It's rich. It's, it's, it's a dense. rich canon. It's Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> baby. Let's go. I'm happy with that pick. 
All right, next up for movie villains. It's a tough one, man, but i got to go with my guy in one of my favorite movies of all time, Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Pretty good. Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter. I think that was pretty pretty good pick. I think that would be... Pretty good. Uh, no, that's like, like yeah, that's expected. I expected you to take Hannibal he's, Lecter. He's next. a goat. He's you're, possibly the greatest. You're doing exactly all the moves <laughs> that I anticipated, Anthony. <laughs> These are exactly. Oh yeah, I had no idea you would pick Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. I was not expecting that. You weren't. I was. You are lying. <laughs> you are being sarcastic right now. Hannibal Lecter is just one of the greatest on-screen villains, and in, in, it's particularly that one. And there are other actors. Obviously, Brian Cox did a great job with Manhunter, but what Anthony Hopkins did in in Sons of the Lambs is just unbelievable. It was a testament to his true brilliance and genius as an actor. What, 20 minutes on screen? I think 17 minutes on screen. Under 20 minutes yeah. on screen and one movie. And he's the most and, how, and he's so memorable. Yeah. I mean, Darth Vader, I love, but Darth Vader's been in a lot. There's of a lot of Vader. A lot of entertainment. I Very think fleshed yeah. out character. Lots of storylines. However, Lecter, 17 minutes on screen, if that, don't quote us. And he's that, <laughs> that memorable of a villain. Number three in the draft. I would have I probably done that too. I think, yeah, that's a good point. His lack of screen time and still having his power. For audiences, is just special. One of your favorite words, gravitas. The gravitas, gravitas yeah, of the Hannibal gravitas. Lecter, Anthony Hopkins. What a pick. What a picture. What a picture. All right. Let's see. Let me uh, update my, my list right here because I have. Yeah, man. I have. Update. Whoops. I hit hide instead of that. All right. So Lecter's been selected because I have my own private list over here. I have a private list. Let's, okay. Let's move on to my second pick of the villain draft. I'm going with. Tom Riddle, a.k.a. Lord Voldemort in the house. Lord My guy, Voldemort. Tommy Riddle. Excellent pick. The Prince of Darkness. The Dark Lord has risen once again. Uh, I'm going Voldemort with my second pick. Obvious reasons, because just besides being a massive fan of the franchise and Are the you? books. But Voldemort, you didn't know. Harry Potter. Is just one of the best villains of the century in cinema, in fiction, the last hundred years perfect character the books go so much more into his mind his psychosis his past but we get plenty of great visuals and sequences with him in the latter three films plus ray fines i know ray fines as voldemort i think it might be the best casting in the entire harry potter franchise possibly i mean everyone in that movie in those movies are cast perfectly and he was an excellent choice Great pick. Great character design, yeah. too, for the films to yeah. make it a little different than the books. More but, human. But I think that Voldemort, and we'll obviously be getting more Voldy eventually, is just such a great character. And I love the attention to detail, to the little things like how they, in in, in Deathly Hallows 1 and 2, as he's losing Horcruxes, his robe goes lighter and lighter to like this ashy white color. That's right. It yeah. goes from vibrant emerald green. Not every, vibrant, big dark emerald green. And yeah. then like every color, every Horcrux that, that gets destroyed, the robe gets more desaturated i never yes. noticed that someone told me about that like a year ago i was yeah. like oh my god that's an amazing detail like it's grayer and grayer and grayer until it's like this ash color at the end yeah in the courtyard it's scene it's like a gray robe and yeah. this, oh man and he turns into dust movies man why did they fight in the fucking great hall i know i know, ah! I know. they did they messed up the, the and it's still great it's still it's great. great it's great it's, it's good stuff okay it's time for anton anthony sugar's third pick <laughs> i love my team anthony name sugar <laughs> so i'm gonna pick a a villain that i'm surprised made it this far I truly am. I was expecting you to take him, but I'm so glad you didn't because he's now mine. Hans Landa yeah. from Glorious Bastards. Exactly what I expected you to Hans take. Hans Landa. Is, um, <laughs> yeah, I can't expect. Yeah. <laughs> James apparently knows my entire game plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hans Landa is an all-time villain. You could argue he's the greatest, and his dialogue, his monologues, and then the presence by Christoph Waltz. For this century, it's, it's him and the Joker, in my opinion, for villains this century. And guess what? They're both on my fucking team. They're both on my team. Yeah, baby, let's go. You're acting, Hans like, I Landa. You're acting like I didn't just draft Darth Vader and Lord Voldemort. Hans Landa. It's a really great pick. Thanks, man. He had to go in the first three rounds. Oh, yeah. I was hoping to get him round to. three. He had to. Couldn't pass up on Voldy, though. I know you couldn't. Couldn't pass up on Voldy. you couldn't. All right. My turn for my third pick. With the third selection... For Team Wayland Yutani, I'm going to select Thanos, Thanos from the MCU, who is clearly and easily probably the best villain from the franchise, but also was teased so well for several of the excellent movies and is the peak of the MCU. 
there was a peak, unfortunately, and maybe they can get back to it if they get another great villain in there. But mm-hmm. I think they captured Thanos so goddamn well. Obviously, the early versions of the first times we saw Thanos looked different than the Josh Brolin version of the mocap that he did. But a massive, indestructible foe who we empathize with strongly. Yeah. And especially in Infinity War. I think the, the the MCU did a great job showing the backstory, giving us exposition on his past and why what motivated him to destroy half the beings on in the galaxy, in the universe. Mm-hmm. And the powers, getting the Infinity Gauntlet with all the stones on it. When we get a villain that's that ultra-powered and makes you lose hope for your characters when we transition from Infinity War to Endgame, what a feeling and what a tone shift in the MCU. And when he, at the end of Infinity War... My God, everyone was just so destroyed, I think, by yeah. what he had done when he finally snaps his fingers. The devastation of the characters we love disappearing, Black Panther disappearing, Spider-Man disappearing, all of these fan favorites just being gone and dust in the wind. It's just an incredible moment in cinematic history, I think. The snap is maybe the most significant moment in cinematic history the last five, ten years, possibly. And I think Thanos is just an incredible villain, and I miss his presence in the MCU. Fantastic pick. Thanks. So I think it's the best villain Marvel's done. I, I think so, too. I don't think anyone's really even come close except for maybe Loki. Loki's pretty damn close, yeah. but he's been turned into such a hero lately that yeah. it's hard to call him still a villain. He's too much of an anti-hero. Yeah. Um, and now he's a hero, really. And I, what I like about Infinity War and why it's my favorite of the all the Avengers movies, and it might be my favorite MCU movies, Infinity War is Thanos' movie. He is, is, he is the protagonist of that movie. I guess, yeah. <laughs> From his perspective, he's trying to carry out a goal and the Avengers are trying to stop him. And we see his, it's all basically through his perspective. Yeah, they treat him like a main character. They, the that's exposition, why the yeah, flashbacks. That's why it's so well done because they treated him not like a villain, but they wrote it like he's the hero of the story. He has a goal, he accomplishes the goal at the end. And then it ends. So and it, he's in the opening scene and he's in the final scene. I think that Infinity Wars is Thanos' protagonist story as him being a protagonist. Not He's obviously a villain to the world, into the universe, but in his story, he's the protagonist. That's why I like that Good movie point. so much. All right, let's recap our teams right now. You so, want to say them? Waylon Utani has Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker, Lord Voldemort, and Thanos. Oh my god, what a team. Anthony Shiger has the Joker from The Dark Knight, Hannibal Lecter from Sons of the Lamps, and Hans Landa from... And Glorious Bastards. I like it. There are a lot of great picks here. It's time for me to take my fourth pick. And I really think this is going to be maybe surprising, but I think it's this strong of a villain, this impactful of a character in a story, one of the most in recent memory. I'm going Fletcher and Whiplash. Oh, shit. Fletcher and Whiplash (laughs) is an unbelievable villain. He drives all of the conflict of that story and pushes Miles Teller's character beyond reason and it is only as great of a movie as it is because of fletcher fletcher what? thomas what a pick yeah that's his name fletcher thomas whiplash whiplash oh fuck yeah you like that pick i like that a lot you like that didn't see that coming i didn't how see you that. like me now i did not see that coming at all all right can't deny that. Fuck I respect it. that. It's a great pick. I think I might have to adjust my. <laughs> you, you didn't see that one coming. You yeah. see what you saw. All my other picks. You, you, you were. I think I just <laughs> left James speechless with that pick. Not speechless, just pleasantly surprised. Your life. Pleasantly surprised. <laughs> pleasantly surprised. That's okay. I still very, feel very strong about my team. Um, with my fourth pick in the movie villain draft, I'm selecting. Anthony's namesake, Anton Sugar. You got him. From No Country for Old Men. I love Javier Bardem's performance. One of the most chilling characters we've seen in a while. Someone who's just desensitized to morality and will do anything to achieve their goals and will kill anybody in their path and their way, but also having this incredible sense of ultra power where thinking that they control fate in a way. Sure. And they let fate guide their actions like they are special Anton Chigurh views himself with this intense hubris where he knows how powerful he is when it comes to people and he can kill anyone he wants, really. Mm -hmm. And he uses this coin as a false sense of approval to carry out heinous acts. Mm -hmm. So he sort of maybe in a way sees himself 
as a hero in his eyes because he's not committing the murders. Fate is the reason why people are getting killed. You know, I'm not obviously he commits murders besides the coin toss, but this sure. this false sense of morality where this coin toss justifies me murdering this person because it's not me. Fate brought me to this doorstep. It's up to the coin to determine whether or not you die. He's got a coin. And I freaking love that part of the character. And that's where I think makes him so fascinating, despite the chilling nature of him. But with Cormac McCarthy's terrific writing, and I think creating an all-time villain in fiction in the last 150 years, not Mm -hmm. just cinema. But there's so many great components to Anton Sugar. But I just love that sense of fate with his character in the coin toss. And obviously, we've done episodes on that. So definitely check him out. Love that episode that we did. This is one of my favorites. We did Exploring Evil yeah. and Touching Her. Yeah, it's a great episode. Excellent pick. All right, it's time for uh, Anthony Sugar to take his fifth <laughs> pick. <laughs> with my fifth pick of the draft, I'm going to go with Amy Dunn from Gone Girl. Oh, that was one of my sleepers, man. <laughs> she ain't no sleeper anymore. Uh, Amy Dunn is one of the best written characters in modern in contemporary fiction. And she is such a great villain because uh, you understand her. And you empathize with her, and you, in a way, I mean, obviously she goes very far, but you can get behind her, her decision making. You can understand it, and then on top of that, just crafting the most unbelievably perfect plan. That's both cringe, tongue in cheek, poking fun at her husband while also setting him up for murder and ruining his life and destroying his world. And it's just like such a great idea, a brilliant concept. It's one of the my favorite contemporary movie twists: the reveal of Amy Dunn. Uh, being alive and the reveal of her entire plot, uh, perfectly performed. Um, and it's just not just an amazing movie, but an amazing performance. And I think that Rosamund Pike, in her career, I don't think she'll be able to do something on this level because it's that special. Same thing with like Christoph Waltz with Hans Landa. Same thing with Eddie Hopkins with Hannibal. Actor, Great actors, they'll get that one role in their career and they'll have a dozen amazing performances, but they have that one role that they'll always be remembered for. And Amy Dunn is that role for Rosamund Pike. Great selection. Great, great selection. I was hoping to get her late. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I love Amy Dunn. All right. With my next pick in the draft, I'm going to go with Norman Osborn, a.k.a. Green Goblin from Spider-Man, who I think might be the best villain in Spider-Man franchises all combined, all nine of the movies. And... A character that still lived on. Obviously, we saw him again in No Way Home. But I think what Willem Dafoe brought to the character, because Spider-Man is such a a landmark film for Hollywood when it came out in 2002. Obviously, because Spider-Man done so well by Sam Raimi. But I think Norman Osborn in Green Goblin by Willem Dafoe had just as much of an impact on the landscape of entertainment going forward with superhero movies as the character Peter Parker, Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Mm -hmm. And it's a character that people still love, still quotes, Finish it. Finish and it. people, I, I love Willem Dafoe, and it's just a great performance. It's it's so terrific and so entertaining and delicious and a delight to watch on screen, I think, <laughs> Norman Osborn, Green Goblin. And that's what I'm going with my next pick, man. I respect that, man. It's a great pick. He steals that movie, and he's still still trending. Do you have any idea how much I've sacrificed? <laughs> the memification of that character. I started this company. <laughs> I'm something of a movie drafter myself. (laughs) (laughs) All right, it's a great pick. I'm going to rebound with that pick, and I'm going to take my second serial killer of the episode. I'm going to take John Doe from Seven. God damn it. John Doe from Seven. I was hoping to get another round before taking him. We just did a great episode breaking down John Doe, uh, Evil Explored, and just watching the film again and Doing that much research and discussing it gave me uh, so much more appreciation for the character and his impact on that story, his impact on cinema. It's one of the most interesting villains of all time, and I just can't believe I got him this late. This is a fucking sleeper, if anything. I mean, holy shit. Where were you on this one, man? (laughs) (laughs) Spacey's perfection, and then it's just an amazing script. I read an interview where uh, Fincher recently was talking about it, casting Spacey, and he wanted Spacey and Brad Pitt wanted Spacey and they were filming Seven, but they still hadn't finalized Spacey's contract and the studio didn't want to pay Kevin Spacey's fee, his uh, quota. And, and, and Brad Pitt was like, are we getting Spacey or what? While like, they're on set, he's like, are we getting Spacey? He's like, we got to get him, right? And then Fincher's like, well, they don't want to pay him what he wants. And then that night, 
Brad Pitt got on the phone with the studio was like, we're going to get Spacey for this, right? And they're like, yeah, of course, absolutely. We're going to get we're gonna get Kevin Spacey for sure. And like he was, the contracts were signed and he was hired within, a, I think, a few days. <laughs> and the Fincher was like, it was just a, a phone call from Brad is all it needed. Brad Pitt, man. Brad Pitt. All right, Waylon Yutani, who are you going to take to to compete with that? No, oh, I got one. I'm going with Jack Torrance from The Shining. There we go. Nice. Jack Torrance is an incredible character, and obviously I love Stanley Kubrick's version of the character in The Shining, the film, versus the book because it's ambiguous whether he's just going insane or is it the Overlook Hotel making him commit heinous acts. Mm -hmm. But some of the best sequences ever put in a horror film are Jack's insanity and his the evolution into insanity and just spiraling down this crazy psychotic behavior and mentality, blending that with alcoholism, being sober in a dry hotel, cabin fever, being alone with his family for so long, being a failed writer, a failed teacher, and just being one of the best horror icons in one of the best horror movies ever. Are we there yet? Jack Torrance, baby. <laughs> I love that movie so much. We did. That was one of our early episodes, The Shining. It was an early one. <laughs> Fuck it, Abe. What a great pick. Uh, Dad, I'm hungry. Well, you should have had your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's about to drive off the cliff in that scene. I know. He has that That's look, what I mean. That look of just like he's on the brink of snapping. He's already going mad. Oh, my God. Such a great such Well, a great you should have had your lunch. <laughs> All right. I have a cool pick. Actually, how many rounds in are we right now? We are. Uh, that was our sixth pick each. Do you have a Google Doc going of updated? I do. It's called Villains. Villains. Let me, Villains. Let me pull that up. So maybe you want to run through the teams right now? <clears throat> Absolutely. So Waylon Utani has, at this moment, Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker, and then Lord Voldemort, Thanos, Anton Sugar, Norman Osborn slash Green Goblin from Spider-Man, and then Jack Torrance. Anthony Sugar has the Joker from The Dark Knight, Hannibal from Sons of the Lambs, Hans Landa, Fletcher Thomas, Amy Dunn, and John Doe from Seven. Pretty good teams. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good teams. I just want to make sure, am I getting Fletcher's last name right before I get canceled? It just says Fletcher in the IMDb. What did you say, Fletcher Thomas? Yeah, is it something like that? Uh, I can't remember. I'm just going to say Fletcher. Fuck it. All right, it's time for my seventh pick. Okay. We're getting into the deeper territory. It's Terrence Fletcher. Fletcher's Terrence his Fletcher. last name. That, thank you. I knew there was a T in there somewhere. I'm just going to say Fletcher. All right, for my seventh pick, I'm going to take a, a villain from a Stephen King novel, just like you just did. I'm going to take Annie Wilkes from oh, Misery. That's a good pick. So Annie Wilkes is one of the most deranged, psychotic, and interesting characters I've ever seen on screen. Oscar-winning performance from Kathy Bates. Her and her performance opposite James Cann is just perfection. It's just one of the most incredible one single location films for the most part. Two people in a house. Yet, uh, with Rob Reiner's direction in the story from Stephen King, it is palpable tension, incredibly thrilling, and highly suspenseful. Something that's difficult to do with a bunch of characters in a bunch of locations and a bunch of conflicts, but uh, they pull it off in this very small scale story in such an impactful way. And any Wilkes's character... It's an amazing reveal for the audience. She doesn't transform, but it's the audience's perception of her transforms as we re as it's revealed how deranged she is and how how obsessed she is and how controlling and eventually uh, <laughs> murderous she is. Uh, one of the most disturbing images I've ever had in watching movies is her breaking his ankles in that bed, just wa tying up his legs, taking out the sledgehammer and just bashing his feet, snapping them in half, and then. Oh my God! It's, it's, and what's great is it's, she starts out in the first act, someone who's generally, genuinely decent and kind, and we think she's trying to take care of him and trying to be a good person. And then when we're halfway into the story, we're like, "How the hell is this guy going to get out of this house with this monster?" And that's what she is. She is a monster. And Kathy Bates's performance is just so incredible. Um, it's subtle. She because she, she seems like like a very warm, kind person. And she does comedy so well, but then this is just, I mean, an, another level of acting, and she absolutely deserved the Oscar for this. Good pick. Good pick. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enter Middle Earth. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to take Gollum with my next pick of the draft. Gollum, obviously, 
is one of the best parts of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Andy Serkis's performance was groundbreaking with motion capture and just the performance in general was terrific. And he's such an underrated performer because he does a lot of mocap and doesn't get the respect he deserves from institutions in the industry. But my God, this movie, especially Two Towers and Return of the King, are dependent on the performance of Andy Serkis as Gollum. He's such an integral character in the final two films. Absolutely. And as Samwise says, <laughs> he's a villain. He's a villain. You don't listen to him. Incredible performance. And I love the back and forth between Gollum and Schmeagol when Schmeagol gets power and is able to put Gollum to rest. But then Gollum comes back and takes over control of the mind and is able to convince Smeagol to do what he wants. And I love the back and forth. And what a terrific ending and an integral part in the cause of the destruction of the ring in general. Absolutely. So absolutely, maybe the most important character in Lord of the Rings. He destroys the ring. He does destroy the ring. <laughs> Throw it into shit. <laughs> <laughs> he did some stuff. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just he kidding. He did some shit. Frodo! <laughs> For Frodo! <laughs> you ever seen the memes where it's post- Destruction of Mordor and Mount Doom. Uh -huh. And then Frodo's in the bed. And then it's a shot of everyone coming in through the, the doorway to say hi to Frodo, right? Sure. And there's one of Ga of Gandalf and someone put a gun in his hand. He says, Sam told me everything. <laughs> 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 and then oh it's a shot God. of Sam just like with that smile. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's do one more pick each and then we'll go into our intermission. How's Sounds that sound? good. So we're going to go into our eighth pick, eighth round of this incredible draft which has just been going so well so far now there's still a lot of great movie villains left to pick it's hard to pick one right now because we're really getting to the deep tracks truly like this is where it's going to be the make or break of of this draft i think i'm just struggling deciding on who to pick right now so bear with me for one moment while i scourge the internet scour the internet for he's struggling everybody he's struggling help. no i'm not struggling he's I'm having a like, tough time i'm just like all right, I'm going to go with someone. Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Hans Gruber yep. from Die Hard. Hans! That was maybe going to be my next pick, so that's a great great selection. Um, Iconic, memorable, one of the best action movies of all time. If not, it could be the best action movie of all time. Made so much better by Alan Rickman's iconic, legendary performance as Hans Gruber. Uh, a villain that stood, has standed, stood the test of time. And he's so good that they connected him to the villain in the third film because they had to like, you know, let's just get some more Hans Gruber in there somehow, even though he's dead. The name Gruber, yeah, the Gruber. carries a lot of weight. Exactly. So uh, Die Hard is one of my favorite movies to watch. Um, and what Alan Rickman did in the film is incredible. It's, it's it really impressive given it was his first film role. And I, I know from interviews that he was quite nervous and Bruce Willis really helped him uh, relax on set because he was just a theater actor before that. Um, but he... Is so cool, calm, collected, extremely controlled, classy, highly intelligent, um, wicked, and he, uh, just one of the best villains ever. And and for action movies, especially like these kinds of action movies, you don't get villains like this in them often. And so that's why it, it, this one's so memorable. What, that's why Die Hard really became such a sensation, I think. One of the best villain deaths ever, too. Yeah, the absolutely. way that's shot, the slow-mo, the music, then cutting to the wide of him falling quickly. like It's incredible. Completely agree. Completely agree. I'm glad I got him. Good for you, man. Thanks, man. There's a lot, just a lot of like friendliness in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of atypical. There's some shit talking really on. Yeah. Um, all right, my final <laughs> pick before we head to the intermission and come back to the draft is going to be the T800 from the Terminator, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's one of the greatest villains ever. I think this indestructible foe. He'll never stop. He'll never sleep. He doesn't eat. And just the concept of the Terminator in the movie in general by James Cameron is just so fascinating and it was executed perfectly. The character design of, of Arnold on top as this massive foe, mm -hmm. just enormous jacked monster that will not stop coming after you. And similar to Mike Myers, but science fiction version. And I think just a lot more fun. Uh, the weaponry, the, the POV through the program interface cpu of the terminators great as well as the repair mode of repairing his arm repairing his eyeball it's just terrific but the character who barely speaks to anything has some of the most iconic lines in cinema history as well as just a great performance and i love the terminator so much and then when we 
get the destruction of the living tissue outside the actual exoskeleton, the Terminator's real identity and real look. What a fascinating villain in just this metallic skeleton with evil red eyes will stop at nothing to destroy humanity. Fuck yeah, the Terminator, baby. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Real happy I got that one. Fuck yeah. Great pick. Thanks. Well, that's a great first eight rounds. Holy Let's, crap. I'm, I'm really happy with our teams. So we'll go into the intermission, and then we'll continue with the last seven picks of this fantastic movie draft. That's, I think it's just an excellent it's heating draft. up, man. Yeah. This is going to be a tough choice for the listeners. But again, if you to, we want you all to decide who wins this draft. So on Spotify, we will have a poll of team selection. So either select Anthony Shiger or Waylon Utani, which is James's team, my team, to see who you think wins this movie draft. Dun, 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 dun. Now, before we continue, the best way to support the show, Raiders of the Lost Podcast, is to become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Why would you want to support us there? Because you get perks like access to ad-free versions of the episode. We understand you all know that we have to put ads in the show so that we can pay the bills. But if you want to listen to an ad-free experience with no Spotify or YouTube ads, just sign up on Patreon. You can listen and link your Spotify there as well. Not to mention you get access to weekly bonus episodes, access to our Discord, which is an incredible film community. We're going to do a watch party on there very soon. We usually do one or two a month, Mm -hmm. as well as merchandise, free videos, private watch parties, all kinds of sick perks. Thank you to everyone who is a patron. You make the show possible also leaving those five star ratings and reviews on spotify and apple podcasts are integral to us getting discovered by new people on the platforms we love to read the written reviews out on apple which you can write essays if you want or write something short and sweet and tasty (laughs) i'll read one out in just a minute but they are such a delight and at 5,000 apple ratings i will be getting a tattoo of anthony's choice somewhere on my body hopefully movie related hopefully not too embarrassing get those reviews up we're at about 2,000 on apple but we got quite a journey to go also but the best way for a podcast to grow organically is just word of mouth spread the word of raiders of the lost podcast to your friends family members anyone who loves cinema who loves movies who loves tv or just dorkery, geekery in general, send them our show. Of course, this episode, like always, is sponsored by our friends at MoviePosters.com, the number one place to get your posters online today. Be sure to use our promo code Raiders10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10% off your order right now. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their poster library. If you love all of these movies with incredible villains and you want to get some posters to deck out your place to, as a gift to the movie lover in your life, be sure... So go to moviepotions.com. They have all sorts of sizes, framing, and even backlighting. We just ordered one for the set, this huge backlit poster, and it comes in very soon. You're going to get to see what that backlighting looks like. You'll be able to make your place look like a fucking movie theater. It's great. Hell yeah. Now, be sure to use our promo code at moviepotions.com, Raiders10, to get your 10% off right now. All right, let's head into our intermission and begin with our movie quote competition. Are you ready? Ready. If you're going to cuss with somebody, you're not going to cuss with me, you little cuss. <laughs> Fantastic, Mr. Fox. You've done that like six times in total. Have I? Yeah. In this podcast history, yeah. I just love that you've, quote. You've done it a bunch. It's really good. <laughs> All right, here's mine. I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. Read Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. Say it one more time. I don't bet. I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. Read Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. Damn it, what is this? I'm blanking. It's Wall Street, Gordon Gecko. Nice. Nice quote. All right, guess this movie release here. What year did Groundhog Day come out? 1990. 1993. Ah, damn. 93. What year did the game come out? Nineteen ninety-seven. Yes. Nice. Correct, Mundo. Thanks. Well done. Because Alien well done. Three was ninety-three, seven was ninety-five, and then so yeah, the game's ninety-seven. Yeah, the game's right? after seven. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Great deduction. <laughs> Such a good movie. It's great. It's such a good movie. Great. Pop quiz time, everybody. How many Wes Anderson movies feature Bill Murray? Not counting the ones that he's making right now. What? How many are with Bill Murray? So I'm going to go with one, two, three, four, 
five, six. I'm going to go eight. The correct answer is 10, everybody. Oh, damn. Pretty close, but it's almost all of them <laughs> <laughs> since Ball Rocket. <laughs> all right. Who directed Wall Street? Oh, that is a good question. Who did direct Wall Street? Crap, who? I have no idea. Um, oh, you don't know this. I... Who directed Wall Street? Hmm. Rob Reiner? Nope. Is it? I have no idea, honestly. Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Yep. Man, he made some good movies, He did dude. Platoon and then Wall Street. Yeah. Back to back. That's man. a great question. I, had, I was completely stumped on that. Yeah. I'm glad I stumped you. All right. Uh, do we have any unsubscribes that you would like to share with the oh, show, of every, course. Anthony? Of course, man. We got lots. We got lots. One second. Sorry. Where are my screenshots? Okay, here we go. Danny Smith X. Anthony can't get through a sentence without 10 ums. <laughs> um, subscribe. He did that same. He did the same one last week, and he did it again in the 1970s episode. And then he wrote, had to post it again because it's too clever, and I want the shout out on an intermission so badly. <laughs> That's freaking great. <laughs> That's really great. Oh my god, he got me again. Then we got uh, GMT Music. No Rollerball, no Magnum Force. Unsubscribed from our 1970s episodes. Those are great movies. Just didn't quite make the cut. Mm -hmm. um, no mention of Sabbath when it came to 70s music. Unsubscribed from Travis Ryan. Sorry, there's a lot of great bands. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even listen to music, man? <laughs> Poser. Uh, on your one click video, JT Rocky wrote, Legend says all of James' stunts were real with zero safety precautions. Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Poole wrote in our 70s episode, No Muppet movie? Unsubscribe! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Daniel McDonough wrote, Unsubscribing on our Mummy episode because the Mummy is re releasing, isn't re releasing in Australia. Oh, Sorry, what a pal. bummer. What a bummer. Remsen wrote in our movie news episode, I'm so glad you acknowledged that Rebel Moon was so bad that you refused to sully yourself by watching it. I was ready to unsubscribe if you say it was fun. <laughs> 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 Definitely wasn't fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, that's it for our unsubscribes today. Yeah, I haven't seen them, and I don't plan to watch them, unfortunately. I don't recommend them. We have a great five-star written review from Rambo Jangus. Rambo. Just film dudes being film bros. I'm having a drinking game for you. Listen to the 20 best questions of all time episode and take a shot every time an actor's name is mispronounced. <laughs> You'll, You'll be, be sloshed before they reach the top 10. <laughs> Jokes aside, these guys know their stuff and every episode is super entertaining to say the least. Side note, I was promised these guys would watch Cold in July if I left a five-star review. Well, here I am. If I don't get an episode on that masterpiece of a film, I just might have to unsubscribe. <laughs> we'll watch it, man. That's the Michael C. Hall film. Cold, Cold in, July. in July. We got it, bro. Thanks yeah. for the review. All right. Thank you so much for that written review. We love to read them out on the show, and we're getting close to breaking 2,000 ratings on Apple Podcasts. Fuck yeah. You don't have to leave a written review. You can just leave the five-star with your finger, the rating. That's also, all we, we have a five-star rating. It's not even a 4.9. It's a five. Is it on Apple right now? Yeah. Five, five? Isn't that great? Let me, I didn't even know. It's notice. a five-star rating. It's been 4.9 forever because yeah. we've had some haters leave essays about why they don't like us. And hold on, let me double check. I, was, I looked at it the other day. Oh, I was this like, is a 4.9 on a five. Oh, for me, it says five. But yeah, yeah, we have like a couple of one-star reviews of just people like very angry with us. <laughs> people are very angry. Over silly things. It's basically like a bad Yelp review for a yeah. restaurant you didn't like. All right. My streaming recommendation for this episode is going to be a film on Max. It is going to be Her. I love it. Nice. Great pick. I chose a recent film that's finally available to watch for free on Prime, The Holdovers. They Hell just, yeah. They just added it. Highly recommend if you did not check it out. One of the best movies of 2023 by far. Yeah, I watched it on a plane again the other last couple weeks ago. It was so good. So, so, so good. So, yeah, so you don't have to rent it anymore. All right, let's get back into the villain movie draft. We have eight selections each left. So, let's get into round eight. Anthony, take it away. So, let's uh, go through the teams so far. So, Wayland Nutani, Darth Vader, Lord Voldemort, Th Thanos, Anton Sugar, Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, Jack Torrance, Gollum, and the T 800 from The Terminator. I think I already won. Uh -huh. Wait until you hear my team. The Joker from Dark Knight, Hannibal. Hans Landa, Fletcher, Amy Dunn, John Doe, Annie Wilkes, and Hans Gruber. That's pretty good. Actually. Sure about that? That's actually pretty good. Sure about that? Sure about that? Sure about that? It's about to get even better now because I'm going to take Commodus from Gladiator. Motherfucker! God damn it, man! No! 
God damn. I quit. I quit. Was that your sleep? Oh, you. I'm kidding. I'm what a quit. flip. You just said pretty good team, right? I think I got this. And then now you're quitting. I'm just. I, I play ultra confident. <laughs> that's, my, that's my vibe. Oh my God. My list looks like it could be just like the best villains of all time. <sighs> Commodus and Gladiator. Joaquin Phoenix. Breaking out in Hollywood with a huge role in a huge movie. Getting an Oscar nomination. Live the test of time. Probably still, it could be his most beloved film, even more so than Joker. His most beloved performance. Um, I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. He did this at such a young age, and and it was a huge production. I'm sure it was pretty overwhelming, but he pulled it off. Great English accent. Beautiful characterization. And what a great, juicy villain role that he just made so much better. And I just love when Joaquin and Russell Crowe are sharing scenes together. It's just such a delight to see. And he did such an amazing job in this role. It's iconic. It's legendary. Um, I just think and it might be still to this day my favorite thing he's done. Okay. Pretty good pick, right? I know how to counter that. Oh, yeah? I'm going to select The Thing from The Thing. The Thing. Great pick. The Thing is this incredible alien from outer space who comes to terrorize planet Earth. Unfortunately for The Thing, he lands in Antarctica. Bad, bad luck. Bad, bad luck guy. Uh, you should have hit a different trajectory. However, just a creature design which can be anything. The creepiness of these creatures who could be from all different planets all over the universe, all over the galaxy. This creature, the thing, we don't really know exactly what it looks like, but it's hyper intelligent. Wicked smart. It can, it can copy any being. Mm -hmm. It has infinite intelligence. It can build a spaceship underneath... A cabin. The thing built this in a, with nothing but a box of scraps in a cave. I'm not the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the thing in the movie, and I think the character, the monster from the thing, is just one of the best ever in horror and science fiction. And yeah, that's that. I'm taking the thing, baby. Great pick. Great movie monster. Love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. I got another pick that's just going to blow your hair back, man. It's going to blow your fucking hair back. I got Denzel on this list. Oh, I know who you're picking. I got Alonzo Harris from Training Day. You in the office, baby. Alon you in the we in the office, baby. Alonzo Harris. Uh, I can't. This movie is so fucking good. It's an all time crime film. Uh, really impressive uh, early feature from Antoine Fuqua. It's so well directed. A perfect screenplay, and Denzel and Ethan Hawke bounce and play off each other so well, and it makes their scene so exciting and. It's a, it's a very rewatchable film. I think it's definitely one of the most rewatchable films even on this list. You know what I mean? It's so fun. It's great to watch over and over again. And Denzel's Oscar-winning performance, he got his second Oscar for this role as Alonzo Harris. Um, it's so specific. I love everything about it from the way he moves to the way he talks to the way he dresses. Um, he just feels like someone who's alive and not just an actor playing a role. And that's a testament to Denzel, who's just one of the greatest actors to ever live. And he's still doing it to this day. Um, but Alonzo Harris uh, could be his greatest creation as an actor um, and his greatest accomplishment as a performer. Uh, it, it's just a, a phenomenal role in, in one of my favorite crime movies of all time. And it's just pitch perfect. And uh, this movie will stand the test of time. And in, in terms of Oscar winning performances in the 90s, this is definitely um, one of the most deserving for sure. Nice pick. Alonzo Harris, baby. I got him. All right, my next pick in the draft is going to be a character. I don't know how they made it this far in the movie villain draft. I don't know how. Considering they are maybe top five all time. Maybe. I'm going with Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. What an incredible icon in cinema. Not just horror movies, not just thrillers, not just suspense. Mega impact on cinema. Obviously, there's are serial killers before Norman Bates, but the impact that Norman Bates had on the public, on entertainment, from Alfred Hitchcock's brilliant directing based off the this book of the same title. I think that Norman Bates, played by Anthony Perkins, is so incredible. It was ahead of its time by decades. It really changed the genres forever. You change things forever. And also, one of the best twists ever. If you go into this movie not knowing the twist, unfortunately, it's probably hard to if you've never seen it. If you go into the movie not knowing the twist and then discovering it, my goodness, what a sh what a jaw dropper! And Norman Bates, I'm taking right now. Great pick, Thank great you. pick. Wonderful performance from Anthony Perkins. 
Um, he's really doing new things with that role, and it's just it still stand, it still holds up, and it's really one of the greatest films ever made for sure. Psycho is an amazing movie. Good pick. We actually did a Psycho episode that you color graded in black and white. Which yeah, is really it was cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, for my ninth pick of the draft. Or it's not my ninth, it's my tenth pick. I'm going to go with an animated character. From possibly Disney's best animated film. I'm going to go with Scar in The Lion King. Oh my god! Scar, The Lion King. Uh, Jeremy Irons, his voice, his performance is just so incredible. Uh, Great character. And his plan is fantastic. It's tragic. He... He really does seem like a villain that it's like, how do you conquer this guy? How do you beat this guy? How could Simba ever stand up to him? And that's why, I mean, obviously he's a child, but when he runs away, and for someone to kill his own brother, it's a Cain and Abel story as well as a Hamlet story, you know what I mean? Um, it's a truly evil person to kill your own kin. And the envy for the throne, someone who, smaller than his brother, younger, um, he was never going to be king. And so he's been living with that shame and that jealousy and envy for years. And he's just been waiting for the right moment uh, to take out Mufasa. And he does. And it's just one of the most tragic moments in cinema history of Mufasa's death and Simba crying there. And it's just a great plan to kill Mufasa and then to scare Simba off by making him think it was his fault uh, to scare him away so that he would never have to deal with him again. Although he does have to deal with Simba when he gets big and strong and, and jacked and ripped. Um, but Scar is phenomenal. Great songs. Um, it's just incredible animation. I love the character design. And, man, Jeremy Irons is an all-time, I think, uh, voice acting performance in cinema, for sure. All right. Be, well, be prepared. I like that scene. I like that number. Yeah, you do. Be prepared. All right. It's a good pick, How you man. feeling, man? How you feeling? I'm pretty pissed that you took Scar just now. <laughs> All right. My next pick in the draft is going to be a villain in a movie that has multiple villains. Okay. But I love this villain so much that I want to get her. You love her. In my lineup. I'm going to go with Oren Ishii from Kill Bill, who is a member of the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad. And I think the most badass character besides Beatrix Kiddo in the franchise in both movies. Lucy Liu killed this performance. I love the introduction of Oren Ishii in the backstory with the anime sequence from Kill Bill. How this young girl whose parents are murdered in front of her while she's under the bed by, uh, by mobsters. And then we have an origin story, basically, through the anime showing how she became the most deadly assassin on the planet, basically. Mm -hmm. And one of the youngest hitmen alive, hit persons alive. And she's basically an unstoppable foe because of her incredible training. And she can do anything. And also, I love the character design. I love the badassery of Oren Ishii. Mm -hmm. I love how she basically takes over the Tokyo underground crime scene and is the first non full Japanese leader of the crime organizations, half Chinese, half Japanese American leader. Yeah. And the way she disposes of rivals by cutting their heads off is incredible. But even though she only really fights one-on-one -on -one against one person, live action in the movie, which is just Beatrix, mm -hmm. it's one of the most impactful fights I've ever seen in my entire life. It is so reminiscent of great old samurai films. The patience of it, the beautiful cinematography, the production design, the wardrobe, and then the confidence she has going into any battle, but then the respect she gives to Beatrix once she realized that Beatrix is a formidable foe and worthy of wielding a samurai sword, and her death is very poetic, how she gets the top of her head cut off. <laughs> but also someone who does terrible things, like murdering a pregnant woman who was once a part of your team, maybe not a friend, but a colleague in a way, <laughs> um, to do a, ho a horrible thing. But also what I like about Oren is she doesn't repent for her sins. She doesn't ask for forgiveness like Vernita Green does. Renita Green does. You know, she doesn't ask for an apology from Beatrix. I like that part of yeah, the Yeah, Vernita's like, can we just can we squash it? But then Oren's like, she knows she they can't squash it. Yeah. And she doesn't want to squash it. That's what I like about Oren Ishii so much. But I love the character. I adore her. Yeah, the monologue about squashing, she <laughs> <It's> like... Imagine. <laughs> That's a great pick. 
It's a great pick. And I love the uh, underworld scene with the uh, other bosses. All right. It's time for me to pick. Take my 12th pick of the draft. There are still some really good movie villains left out there. Lots of really good options. And there's an actor who is my favorite actor of all time. Who gives a wonderful performance in a Martin Scorsese picture. And that is Daniel Day-Lewis as Bill the Butcher in Gangs of New York. Bill the Butcher. It's such an incredible performance. And whenever Daniel Day acts, it just doesn't feel like acting. It just feels like the person is existing and they're just capturing it on screen. Uh, the costume design, the mustache, the hat, uh, the mannerisms, the, the, the accent, so cool. And it's just the glass, the glass eye with the um, the eagle on it. It's, 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 it's so much about that film. It's Warner Square City is underrated, I think, because it's just so phenomenal. But he's got such an incredible filmography. Gangs in New York is a really cool movie, and I've always liked it since I was a kid. And uh, something about Daniel Day Lewis as Bill the Butcher is just such a great villain, um, and great monologues. I love the monologue when he's after he's been shot. And he's got the American flag over his shoulder. That's an incredible monologue. And then uh, a bunch of other monologues throughout the first act of the film. Uh, but once they go to war, man, he becomes like a vicious monster. And he's a person who rules with an iron fist and takes what he wants. And he's extremely smart, uh, but obviously born on the streets and not educated. But, uh, man, what a ruthless individual, uh, cunning, eccentric, stylish. Uh, he has fun with what he does. Uh, there's so much to like about Bill the Butcher, and I, I adore, I adore this film, and I love this performance. Really good pick. Thanks. I can't believe I got it that late. I got a great counter to that. Oh yeah, what's your counter? Calvin Candy. Ooh, you from got Django him. Unchained. One of Leonardo DiCaprio's best performances. Highly entertaining. Is equally despicable as delicious of a villain to watch on screen. What a performance! Unlike anything. Leo had ever done up until that point before to take on a role like that, which could be controversial for some audiences, but turns out to be such a terrific character in the pantheon of Tarantino characters. Some of the greatest, some of the best monologues he's ever done, the costume design, the wardrobe, the ironies of the character. He's, he goes by, uh, Monsieur, 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 what's the French first, sir? Uh, Monsieur. Monsieur. Monsoir? Whatever it is. I don't speak <laughs> French, gonna, I'm sorry. Someone's going to unsubscribe. But he doesn't speak French, so don't try to speak French to him because he's not really that smart. And he doesn't know Alexandre Dumas is a black, was a black man. Exactly. Yeah. And I like the character design. He's from Candyland. His, his plantation is called Candyland. He's got terrible teeth from what you can assume is just eating candy or, or <laughs> sugar constantly. Um, Leo's terrific in this movie. He's horrible, horrible character. But, my God, you can't take your eyes off him. Great pick, and it's amazing. This is such a tough draft that Calvin Candy and Bill the Butcher went 12 picks. When they both went in the 12th round. So three picks left. Yeah. Woo. Isn't that amazing? Getting there. That's how, that's how tough this, this draft is. Like, so many great villains in film history. All right. I'm going to go with another animated villain. And I think that's something that you're kind of you're missing out on, man. Don't, don't forget about the animated villains. I'm gonna I, go with, I was going to take Scar, man. You got me. Oh, sure you were. Well, you're going to take this guy too. Syndrome from The Incredibles. <laughs> it's a good pick. Syndrome is an incredible villain because his plan's fantastic. A great performance from Jason Lee. And what I like about the character so much is you understand his conflict. You understand why he felt so wronged. And you understand what's motivating him. And you feel that drive. And yes, he's carrying out, he wants to carry out destructive acts on the city. And he has a terrible plan. But they did a great job of making you understand him and not getting behind him, but empathizing with him, which is so important. The, and the character design is fantastic. A lot of humor and a lot of uh, charm to the character as well. Um, and I love the reveal of him being the villain and the irony of his end, <laughs> which uh, I'm going to spoil it right now if you haven't seen The Incredibles, him being killed with, because of his cape and he was warned not to wear a cape. <laughs> And we got that great montage of flashbacks. No cape! <laughs> and then that's how he's undone. But his plan's really fantastic. And, and his tricking of the characters. And then uh, I love the huge base layer. And 
it, it's interesting that he came, he started as like this little kid who's a super fan. He came from nothing, and then uh, we see him as an adult, and he's got this huge, giant island base, like a Bond villain. And so it, it, I love that like Bond villain esque tone to it. Um, it. It's just a phenomenal film. It's really, it really is one of the greatest superhero movies of all time, in my opinion. It's top ten. It's such a great film. Um, and in, in, in superhero villains, Syndrome is absolutely, I would say, top five without a doubt. You you can't deny that. He's so good. That's a really good pick, man. That's a really, really good pick. James is searching animated villains right now. No, I'm not. I'm not because I'm very confident with my next pick, which is a villain in the greatest film ever made, in my opinion, from 2001, A Space Odyssey. I have HAL 9000, which is such a juicy, complicated robot AI villain. You know, this was done in the 1960s, and it's as relevant as ever. You know, what happens with AI if it has too much control over human beings, for mm-hmm. example, on this mission that they are on, these astronauts with HAL as their interface in their computer and a part of their mission, sort of a another astronaut with them as they kind of treat them like. There are teases of some of the programming is a little odd. It's not quite human, but it's pretty close. He sort of has morality, but really does he, does HAL. And HAL has a secret mission that the astronauts don't know about that leads to him killing them. And when this movie, I think the biggest strength of 2001 Space Odyssey is when HAL starts to go after the crew and starts to take them out. One by one, tries to stop them from shutting down the mission. It's so incredible. The suspense built, the tension, and sort of the sneakery of HAL, how... Hal can watch them anywhere, basically. He can read their lips when they think they're safe from microphones, and he's watching their every move. And he starts off as this innocent robot who's just trying to facilitate the mission with the crew. But turns out, being a villain, that's complicated because it's not like Hal's a malicious villain. It's not like this is premeditated. It's because it's what his programming's done. So ironically, humanity has programmed Hal this way to destroy humanity if the if the humanity sees fit. So humanity gave Hal the programming to kill humanity. It's ironic. And for me, what really puts the villain and the character into the all-time great category is not wanting to die. His fear of death. He doesn't want him to pull the plugs. He doesn't want him to take out the memory cards. He's afraid. That's really like that's the big moment for the character of Hal. And that really pushes it over the top, I think. And I feel like Peter Jackson got a lot of influence from Hal's character design of just being the red light in the rectangle. I feel like for Sauron to be visually shown on screen outside of the opening of Fellowship, I feel like, I could be wrong, but but in my opinion, Peter Jackson got influence from Hal 9000. That's a great connection because technically they're... It's never really confirmed if it's even in the books. There's a tower. There's an eye on a tower. Um, the eye of Sauron is mentioned like uh, once or twice, but it's not described in detail in any way. So it's never implied that there is an eye watching everything. And so that's definitely something Peter Jackson and his team put into the film to make a visual representation. And I think that yeah, I think you might be onto that, onto something there. With the, I just thought of it. It's a great comparison. It's a really great comparison. Thanks, man. I literally doesn't want to die either. It just popped into my Terrified head. Terrified of death. <laughs> True. All Frodo, the, all don't the, do it, Frodo. Almost all villains are. He goes. Frodo goes inside of him to kill him. You have to go inside like a True. <laughs> interior. That's a good point. Red everywhere. Hey, it's pretty similar. Not bad. All right. After that insightful discussion about Hal, <laughs> I have another pick from one of the greatest actors of all time. And another Martin Scorsese film. Getting Marty out here in the deep in the track. I'm getting Max Cady in Cape Fear. Counselor. Counselor. Good pick. Good pick. Counselor. So Robert De Niro's obviously we all know one of the greatest actors to ever live. And Max Cady is one of his less talked about, lesser talked about roles, but it is so good. And I like the character design. So Robert Mitchum played the character in the 1960s in a very good film version of the adaptation of the novel. And then I, I, I like Scorsese's version better. And you've never seen De Niro like this. And this character, it's so fascinating. He's so interesting. Max Cady, he is brutal and ruthless. He is a monstrous human being. He is terrifying. 
Um, but he is so intelligent, and he's not educated, but he educated himself while in prison. And he became well versed in the law, he became an expert in law, and also he became in basically kind of like an indestructible human being. He could take any kind of pain. He can he can uh, take all comers. He's he's lived through so much pain, so he understands pain better than anyone else. Um, and he's so so tough. Like one of the most shocking scenes is when after. Uh, the guy hires a bunch of guys to rough him up and they go at him with a baseball bat, with a bike chain, with a bunch of other weapons. It does nothing to him. He gets, he gets slashed, he gets thrown to the floor, he gets beat up, but then he stands up and he takes those guys out. It's just, and that's a moment in the film, film where you're like, oh my God, how are they going to ever get, stop this guy? They can't stop him legally because he's on, he's way ahead of them, every step ahead legally. And he even gets it to be, he's able to get a restraining order <laughs> ironically <laughs> and then you can't even physically take him out so how do you stop this guy and on top of that the voice the characterization i know that there I've, I've seen sorry there's a something go flying by sorry for the sound i've seen a fair amount of dislike for the performance and the accent i think it's great i think that he, he goes quite far with the accent and it's very powerful and extreme but i think it works for the character i love the character design Smoking cigars, covered in tattoos, the slick black hair, uh, the messed up teeth. Everything about how the character looks and feels and sounds, I think, adds to the film. And that the, the movie is a great ensemble. Nick Nolte is great. Uh, the rest of the cast is phenomenal. And it really is, I think, it's De Niro's show. And when, he's, when things start hitting the fan, he starts killing. He starts carrying out heinous acts. Oh, my God. It is a ride. Counselor. 12 minutes of Anthony glowing about a murderous rapist. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Boom roasted. The, for the character I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I picked Calvin Candy. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you picked Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many picks do we have left? You have two left and I have one left. Oh, my God. Only two left. The only... final countdown. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. This is getting harder and harder. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh, man. Okay. Who do you should I... take Lex Luthor from Superman Returns. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Um, Who do I want to take? 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 This is James getting... is scrolling the internet right now. He's desperate. I'm not desperate. He's desperate. Just, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything big. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't want to make sure I didn't miss any any huge characters. He's struggling, I have, guys. I have plenty. He's choose. in trouble, guys. He's on the ropes. You wish I was on the ropes. I don't know, guys. It's not looking too. Rough. He's not looking too good. I'm. I'm. In, I'm. In, no, I your team's like, great. Your team's. I have great. like five options right now. I just want to pick which one because there's only two left to mm -hmm. pick. So I'll make sure I go out with a bang. If that makes sense. Sure. You know what I mean. Sure. You know what I mean. Yeah. Do you, man? So, with my next pick in the movie villain draft, I will go ahead and select. Anytime now. Hmm. Anytime now. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's tough to decide. It's tough to decide. Um, how about I go with? I want to do something fun too. Man, just pick something. I'm gonna go Jesus Pazuzu from The Exorcist. Pazuzu. <laughs> Pazuzu from The Exorcist, who is a demon that possesses a young girl, and sets off extraordinary events for the greatest horror film arguably ever made in The Exorcist, and speaking through her voice and through her body and taking control of her. What a film. What a picture. The decomposition of the girl, the body structure movements, the, the, the body physicality movements, oh, yeah. the puke, the vomits, the things that Pazuzu says through her mouth. Hearing that from a young girl probably had never been done before in cinema. Just disturbing, terrible things. I love Pazuzu as a character and as a villain. Great pick, man. Excellent pick. All right, I got one final pick, my 15th pick of the draft. This is it, man. I got to make a good one so that I can hopefully claim victory on this excellent draft, which has been so fun to do with you. Unpredictable. Exciting. I'm going to go with Tyler Durden in Fight Club. What a pick. To finish out my draft, Tyler Durden, one of the coolest characters ever put on screen. and. 
I know I'm not supposed to talk about this movie. And I'm going to, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen it, but obviously I'm going to spoil what's going on with Fight Club right now. So if you haven't what seen What movie? <laughs> Tyler Durden, I also, I mean, first of all, being what is we think is a friend to narrator and then end up, end up being narrator and then end up being the most fast, like such a crazy villain himself. A different version of himself that he can't control. A different psyche that controls his body, controls his actions, hides things from him. Once shit hits the fan, once the twist happens in Fight Club, it's like, holy shit, how do I stop Tyler Durden? How do I stop this plan? How do I prevent people from getting hurt and this crazy exercise from being carried out? And it's an amazing um, third act of that film. It's so phenomenal. And Brad Pitt, legendary performance, one of his best, uh, influential for fashion, for hair, uh, just for, for just being a, a cool guy. <laughs> Tyler Durden in the 90s and 2000s, his influence on pop culture was, it really was immense. And it's one of David Fincher's best films. Um, one of the coolest characters, best lines, um, so many great monologues. Um, uh, Chad Palahniuk, uh, Chuck Palahniuk's writing is phenomenal. And then the dialogue that Brad Pitt gets to say in this film is just so incredible. There's really nothing like it. Um, they were pushing the envelope of filmmaking in every uh, manner of production and performance with Fight Club. And um, Tyler Durden is a testament of that. So I'm going Tyler Durden, 15th pick. Really good pick. Thanks, man. Last really? pick. What a sleep. That's a sleeper, man. That's a fucking sleeper. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Was my last pick in the draft? I'm gonna pick the villain of my favorite slasher, Ghostface. My favorite slasher movie. One of my favorite horror movies of all time. Just a great villain in cinema, in horror. The genre changed and brought the slasher back because of Scream. And when it comes to Wes Craven's characters, or I think just horror icons in general, I'm going Ghostface is my, my last pick of the Excellent draft. Excellent pick. Thank you. I like that. Thank all you. right, let's round up the teams of this 15-round draft. So Waylon Utani, we have Darth Vader, Lord Voldemort, Thanos, Anton Sugar, Norman Osborn, Jack Torrance, Gollum, the T-800, The Thing, Norman Bates, Oren Ishii, Calvin Candy, Hal 9000, Pazuzu, and Ghostface. Anthony Shiger's team is the Joker from The Dark Knight, Hannibal Lecter, Hans Landa, Fletcher from Whiplash, Amy Dunn, John Doe, Annie Wilkes, Hans Gruber, Commodus, Alonzo Harris, Scar, Bill the Butcher, Syndrome, Cape Fear, Max Cady, and Tyler Durden. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Bravo. A round of applause. Bravo. I feel really great about my team. Me too. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah. So we want you all to vote on who has the best team. So hop on Spotify if you have it. There will be a prompt for a poll to pick the best team. And also we'll list the teams and the, the draft results as well. It's in the description so you can see whose team is whose. And who they got. So please go ahead and vote so we can determine whether or not I finally win a movie draft. <laughs> or Anthony just beats me again. Um, I need this. We're going to put money on this one? No. <laughs> I, need a, I need a W. I'm not buying you any more ramen, dude. Um, thank My, you so much for tuning in, though. Yeah. Those, we had, I had a fun. blast doing this. It was a great episode. Movie drafts are a lot of fun. They're a breeze. They're, yeah. they're a nice time. Yeah. They're, yeah. Really, they're a really good time. Chill. But thank good you so vibes. much for tuning in wherever you are. Be sure to become a patron today at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple. And take care, everybody. See you next time. This episode was executive produced by our Chosen One patrons, Cody Moen, Andrew Hagen, Becca Keen, Benjamin Cook, Calvin Murphy Griggs, Nicholas Martin, Darian Singleton, Tyler McFly, Andrew Hagen. Our Chosen One patrons are our biggest supporters. Thank you so much. Raiders of the Lost podcast is a mirror image production. Sound mixing done by Jacob Kosler. Opening music by Chase Jackson.